everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this two-tone necktie that you can see Melba wearing here. So we hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this two-tone necktie, you'll need yarn in two colours. Now, of course, you can make this in just one colour if you prefer. It will. It also looks great in just one colour. So, you know, that's, that's up to you. But I'm continuing with the two-tone version today. And I'm using this dusky pink and pale mint green. And they're a, this, both are the same yarn. They're a two-weight mercerized cotton. And it works up beautifully into this pattern. I really love mercerized cotton. It's um, such a nice yarn to work with. So choose your yarn. If you go for a heavier weight yarn, you will have a wider necktie and a larger bow. Uh, which might suit you and then if you have a you know a, a smaller finer weight yarn you'll have a smaller bow and a finer or a thinner necktie entirely up to you I find that two weight is ideal for this pattern for a cat you'll need a crochet hook and I'm using a three millimeter today you'll need a pair of scissors you'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends and an optional tape measure to have on hand to take a measurement from your cat's neck circumference and a good idea to measure the length of the chain that you create at the beginning so that the length of the chain will depend on the size of your cat's neck and the size of the bow that you want including the length of the tails that you want hanging down from the bow so I'll include in the description box below a standard guide to cat neck sizes and you can work from that and then estimate how much you'll need for your bow. But if you've got an exact measurement of your cat's neck circumference, it's always ideal. Okay, so here's the one I've made previously in yellow and blue. Now, to make this, you'll need to know how to make a slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to single crochet and double crochet, and that's pretty much it from there you'll just be weaving in your ends and um, tidying up your project at the end so it is beginner friendly um, you'll also if you're making it in this two-tone version like I have you'll need to know how to change color and I'll show you how I do that but if you've got a different method you can absolutely do it your way so that's pretty much it and let's get started okay so take your color one and make a slip knot onto your hook And just a reminder, if, if you need to brush up on any techniques before you get started, then please do. And, you know, there's lots of ways to make a slip knot, so you make it your way. Okay, from here you're going to chain the length that you want for your necktie. Okay, now I'm going to chain around 200 chains. So this will depend on the factors of your cat's neck circumference how big you want your bow, how much length you want in the tails of your bow, and your hook and yarn size. So, um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go for around 200 chains. Now, you need an even number of chains, okay? So, chain an even number, and, yeah, however many you need to accommodate all of those different factors. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off my chain. Now I'm going to go around 200. I might go a little bit, a little bit higher than 200, maybe 210, 220. But I'm going to yeah, go ahead and make my chain. I'll do that off camera and I'll see you shortly. Okay, so once you have your chain, so I've got 210 chains there. We're going to start working down our chain, starting from the second chain from your hook. Now, here's where you can have that option of working into the third loop of your chain. So if you look at the front of your chain, you have these Vs, and you turn it over, you've got this little loop at the back here, which is what I call the third loop. So starting in the second chain from the hook, Work your single crochets into that third loop of your chain. Now again, that's only optional. If you want to just work into the front, if that's easier for you, then you can do that. 
Otherwise, this will, working into this third loop at the back here, with your first row of single crochets, will just give you a, a little bit more symmetry to your, the sides of your necktie. So for row one, you'll just work one single crochet in each chain in that third loop, or not, all the way down to the end. So I'm going to finish my row one, and I'll meet you at the end. Okay, so I'm just placing my last two single crochets in this first row. And make sure you don't forget that very last chain. And that's row one done. So moving on to row two, we're going to chain one here and turn. And then single crochet into that first chain. And then we're going to chain five. Four and five. And then we're skipping two. And then single crocheting into the third chain along. Or the third stitch along now. Chain five. Three, four and five. And then skip two and single crochet. Okay, so you're going to just do that all the way along. You chain five, four and five, skip two, and single crochet. Okay, so finish out your row. Now, if you get down to the end of your row and you don't have two to skip at the end, don't worry about it. It's not worth going back and correcting all your work for. Um, just, just work, like, just skip one at the end if you need to, okay? Or, or skip three if you need to. Don't, don't worry about it too much, okay? If you, at some point, skip too many or... You know, you don't have the right amount, exactly the right amount left at the end. It's, you know, it's not a big deal. It's not really worth going all the way back for. So, well, unless you, unless you want to, of course. So just continue along and I'll meet you when I finish, oops. I'll meet you when I finish out this row two. So it's just that same pattern. Chain five, skip two and single crochet. Okay, so I'll meet you down at the end of my row two. Okay, so I'm just at the end of this row two. Two, three, four, and five. And I've got my two to skip there and a single crochet in that last one. Now, as I said before, if you, you know, if something's happened along the way and you don't have two to skip at the end here, no big deal. If it's three, if it's one, just, you know, just go with that. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about that too much. Okay, now we're going to move on to row three. So we're going to chain four and turn. Now that uh, chain four counts as a double crochet and a chain two. Okay, and then we're going to single crochet into that chain five space. Chain two and single crochet into the next chain five space. So that's how row three goes. The chain two, single crochet into the chain space. Chain two, and single crochet. So at the end of this row, we're going to change color. And then we're going to basically repeat these last, th these three rows here. And in the last row, the seventh row, we're going to add a single crochet row on the end. Okay, so um, we've finished after this end of this row, we've finished our three row repeat. Okay, so go ahead, finish out this row. I'll meet you just before we get to the end of the row and we're going to um, finish this row off as we started. We'll do a chain two and a double crochet, but I'll meet you, I'll meet you down at the end here once I finish my row three. Okay, so I'm just finishing up row three here, chain two single crochet in that last chain space and then to finish off this row we're going to chain two 
And then we're going to double crochet in that single crochet from the previous row. Okay, but we're not going to finish our double crochet. So leave two, two loops on your hook and now you're going to change your colour. Okay, now if you're just continuing with one colour, of course you, you continue. Otherwise, the way I change colour, it's just in a really simple way. And like, as I said at the beginning, if you've got your way, then please do it your way. Otherwise, you'll just pull up a loop and finish off your double crochet with that new colour. And then just pull on your tail ends. And you can snip off, you can snip off your tail end there, your um, equivalent of the pink tail end. Just leave enough for sewing or weaving in at the end. And we're going to move on to row four with our new colour. So chain one, and once again, just you know, just give those those tail ends a little a little tug to make sure they're nice and secure in there. And turn. And in this this double crochet at the beginning of the at the end of the previous row, we're going to single crochet. And if you need to again, just you know, just give those tail ends a little tug. In this two chain space here, we're going to place two single crochets. And then in the single crochet that went into that five chain space, we're placing one single crochet. Okay, so in the two chain space, each two chain space, we'll place two single crochets. And then in the, ch in the single crochet, one single crochet. Okay, so two single crochets in the two chain space and then one single crochet in the single crochet. Okay, so we're doing a single crochet row just in that same repeating pattern. So you go ahead, finish that up and I'll meet you down at the end once again. Okay, so I'm just finishing off this row four single crochet and in the last two chain space two single crochets and then into the top of that chain so remember we said that the chain at the beginning of the previous row was a double crochet plus a chain two so we just need to work into that well it's not the exactly the top of the chain it's the it's the uh, second chain which is like it like working into a double crochet so hopefully that makes sense okay so now we're just going to repeat row two so chain one and turn and place your single crochet in that first stitch chain five four and five skip two and single crochet Okay, so go ahead and repeat row two, four and five, and single crochet. Okay, so go ahead, finish off this row, sorry, repeat row, I think I said repeat row five. Repeat row two for this row five, okay, and I'll see you at the end of this row. Okay, so just finishing off this row here, two, three, four and five and once again if you haven't got the exact number to skip at the end it's no big deal but I happen to there so that's good Oops. single crochet in that last stitch and then of course for row six we're repeating row three okay so we'll do our chain four two three and four and turn. Oh, sorry for working off camera there. Do I need to go back? So we've put our single crochet in that last stitch, chain four, three and four, and turn. Single crochet in that first chain space, chain two, and then in the next chain space, single crochet. So continue on and finish up your row six and I'll meet you after that. Okay, so I'm just finishing off row six here, single crochet in that chain space, 
chain two, and then double crochet in that single crochet. Okay, and then we're just repeating uh, row four for our last row. Okay, so chain one and turn in that first stitch, the double crochet one single crochet in the chain space, two single crochets. Okay, so just continue on and finish up that last row. So same as row four, just with those single crochets all the way along. And then we will have finished up the crochet part of this necktie and all that's left to do after that is to weave in our tail ends. So I'll see you at the end of row seven. Okay, so here I am just finishing off this final row, the last few stitches. So single crochet in that single crochet and then in that chain four, the two single crochets and then one single crochet in that second chain. And then you can yarn over and pull through, leaving a tail to weave in. Snip off your end. And now we've got these tail ends to weave in, so just tidy up your ends there. And if you've got if you know you've got these two tails together and if you want to you can tie a knot in those just to secure that color change a little bit further but it's not it you know it's not 100% necessary but you can tie uh, just a simple double knot there and then you've just got your tail ends to weave in so I'll kind of assume that you know how to do this. You're basically just weaving your weaving your tail ends and securing them in your in your work. Just thread this needle if I can. Let's just do one on camera. There we go. So you'll just m move through the stitches to the best of your ability. Pick up a loop and just move through the stitches. And you want to pull, pull nice and firmly, but not too tight that you misshape your work at all. Oh, I'm working off camera again, my apologies. So I'm just going to go down this part of the chain here. So what's a good idea is just to change directions a couple of times. I'm going to go back up, back up here. into this part here and then just come along the actual stitches there and then just go back one more time in through the stitches so it's nice and secure in there And then you can just make sure that you've got no misshaping happening. And then you can just snip off the excess of that tail. And then of course you'll weave in the other three tail ends. So I'm going to pause here for a moment and weave in those last three tail ends. And I'll meet you once I've done that. Okay, so there's my necktie all finished, ends woven in, so let's just tie a bow in here. And with this two-tone, it looks really pretty, the way the two colours come through. I love it, I think it's really pretty. So it's a bit hard to tie when it's not on a neck. But there we go, a little bow. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and as always, I would love to see the colours that you've used, um, you know, the yarn that you've used, your creativity, and also meet your cat. So if you get time, please send along your photos to catventurous.com.
community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So uh, thanks very much for being here. As always, I appreciate it very much and uh, hope to see you soon. Bye. Good girl, Melba, you're a pro. She's purring again. Good girl.